Uh, we're at CES 2013. Uh, we're here with Giovanni uh, with uh, E Inc. And we're here to look at E Inc. Triton 2 as well as their new frontlet technology. Uh, hi, Michael. Hi. So, what we have here today is our new Triton 2 technology. So, this is a uh, 9 inch e reader from a company uh, called Ictaco. And as you could see, the Triton 2 color is richer than the, we, what we announced about two years ago with our Triton 1 technology. So this is an e-reader that's available on the market today um, from uh, Ectaco, and it's called the, the Jetbook. It uses Triton 2. Now, if you want to get into the actual technology of Triton 2, what we've done with Triton 2, in addition to improving the color itself, we actually also have a front light technology, which allows you to basically shine a light uh, over the, the display surface, and that does a, a, a a few things. One is it makes the whiters white, <coughs> the whites whiter, and it also makes the colors richer. And at the same time, it now en enables you to actually read um, when you don't have a, a lot of ambient lighting. For example, if you're if you're an, a nighttime reader and uh, color displays. So as you can see with Triton 2 with front light, we have a lot uh, a lot brighter display with a lot brighter colors. And if you want to see them together, here what we have basically Triton 2 with front light and Triton 2 without front light. So if you could see here, this is the Ataco Jetbook Color 2. So this is this, the second generation, and it is using E-Ink Train 2. So it's the double twos here, and you can see here, it looks very much the same as the original Ataco Jetbook Color, except you notice that the colors are looking more vibrant than they did look before. And right here, this is a prototype device. So this isn't on the market. This is just uh, you know proof of concept technology. Right. This is a proof of concept of the display module. Right. Okay, so now that we've seen, you know, the Jetbook Color 2 and uh, E-Ink Triton along with Frontlight technology, how exactly does Triton 2 differ from Triton 1? Okay, so for that, I'll just go into uh, this module right, uh, module right here. So what I have here is just the display module itself. So in Triton 2, there's a, there's a number of improvements over Triton 1. Uh, starting off with uh, the actual ink layer, we have a bit higher contrast than the ink layer itself, uh, the black and white ink. And in the module, we've had two improvements. One is the front light, as you see over here, it has two connectors, one that controls the, the lighting, and the second one that actually controls the display. So what this display has is a number of LEDs along one of the sides that illuminate the surface. And this is different than backlighting, but because, because you're actually shining the, li the light from the top of the display rather than from behind, you don't need as much light energy to be able to, to read the display and, and uh, have that brightness. So is it fair to say that Triton 2, would it work on its own just as well as if it were to work in conjunction with Frontlight technology? Did you develop Triton 2 with the intention of using Frontlight technology? Or did you do it more as like a standalone type thing? Well, we, we, developed, we developed it to um, basically improve the color capability. And we were, at the same time, we were developing a Frontlight technology to, to work with both color and black and white. And so we then took the Frontlight and applied it to Triton 2. Right, so it, it's pretty exciting to have a new iteration of technology that is supposed to work with frontlight technology because that seems to be right. the huge new thing. Almost everybody is right. moving that direction. Right. So what we've had to do in terms of the actual tailoring of it is when you're putting a front light on a color display, because of the way we generate our color, it has you have to have certain properties in the actual uh, color waveguide that you put on top. So there is some customization of the color of the waveguide because of the color filter that we have. So one of the things that we actually also have done in Triton 2 is that in order to make the colors richer, we've actually, rather than using square pixels, we've actually gone to more rectangular pixels. So a greater amount of the surface is covered by the actual uh, pixels that are generating the color, and that contributes to the, to the vibrant color. And so then if you then put the front light on top of that, you have the, vi the vi vibrant color that comes to you from the, uh, the color filter, and then you have the, the increased uh, white state from, from the front light. So one thing I'm wondering is with uh, the front light technology, the, the whites pop more on this version than exactly. they did the original E-Ink Triton 2. How, how does that exactly work with the, you know, the text being higher contrast, easily readable, more right. it pops more, and the whites pop more? It works exactly the way our technology has always worked. 
basically our technology has always gotten brighter as you went outside into the sunlight because the amount of light energy that you had was greater. So by putting a front light on it, because we've in we increased the amount of light energy that is, a that is shining on, on top of the surface compared to the ambient lighting that you have in the room, that's what causes the white to become whiter and the colors to become richer and to increases the contrast of the display at the same time. Now for manufacturers, hardware vendors, companies that want to get into this technology, is there any, t can you go with the same sort of free scale processors as uh, companies traditionally go with? You know, you look at a lot of the major companies, it's mainly e-ink screens, free scale processors. Now, will the same processors be able to give you sort of that robust experience with Triton 2 and, uh, you know, with the front link technology? So you know, if, if you're actually using a color display, you need to go to a processor that is actually capable of rendering your display for color. Because what, what we're now doing with our color display, the same thing as Triton 1, is we actually are using color pixels, um, actually using an array of white and black pixels in, behind the color filter to generate the color. So you need to have a controller uh, a hardware controller that actually understands how to do that. And there are a number of controllers on the market that could do that. Well, some of them do it using discrete electronics, um, like the Epson Rock controller, and some of them will do it through basically reprogramming the firmware, which you, um, you can get from either the, the, the Freescale device or from the TI device. Okay, awesome. So we've gotten a, a pretty good heads up on uh, you know what exactly is involved with Triton 2 as well as the, the front light technology. Uh, any closing remarks? marks on what you've shown us today? Um, no, I, I guess we, we're still very excited with this technology. We are, we're talking to a number of customers and actually um, Pocketbook has announced that they will be uh, uh, ship, releasing an 8-inch e-reader with our uh, color front light in the middle of this year. Awesome. So we look forward to that and again uh, the Jetbook uh the Attaco Jetbook Color 2 uh, is on the market today, so if you're looking for a follow-up and to immediately take advantage of the second generation E-Ink Triton, uh, you can purchase that from Attaco's main site. And uh, I want to thank you, Giovanni, for uh, taking the time to speak Thank with you us. very much. All right, for Goody Reader, my name is Michael, CS2013.